Colouring your animations can be a slow process, but there's a feature of OpenTunes that can help, the colour model. And that's what we'll look at today. Hello friends, and welcome to a look at the colour model feature in OpenTunes. And as always, if you're new here, my name's Darren, and on this channel I have OpenTunes tutorials showing features of the application like this, news videos, collaborations and animations. So subscribe to not miss them and hit that bell to be notified when I release a new video. And if you're interested in animating with OpenTunes, check out the other videos on my channel, including plenty of beginner videos. And as this video is quite long, I've got links in the description to each section of this tutorial so you can skip to the parts you want to see or skip back easily to rewatch. So onto the colour model. Now a colour model, traditionally, is just a single drawing of a character, background or prop to show the layout and colours of the drawing in a given situation. So you might have a different colour model during the daytime and one for the night. So then you can ensure that each frame is painted in the same colour. Now in OpenTunes we've got a colour model panel and this can be used for a few different tasks, including showing the model sheet for your characters to ensure you're drawing on model, or so you can see the relative size next to other characters to show a turnaround animation, so you can see your character at any angle, or to show any other animation to make sure you draw their movement correctly. And I'll show you how to do all these later in the video. But the main use for the OpenTunes colour model panel is to enable you to see a full colour view of your character and use it to directly select colours in your palette. And that's what I'll be concentrating on today. But we've already got the colour palette that holds the colours used in level, and isn't this good enough? Well yes, mostly it is, and with it you can group a number of colours by tabs by clicking the new tab button here. You can add and rename colours, and these are visible to all but in the small thumbnail view. So you could have one tab for each character on a level, and each one containing only the colours for that character. And you can reorder them by holding the control key and dragging them to the new location, but you can't change the first two palette entries on the first tab. And you can use the style picker to choose styles directly from the current drawing. But when you use this tool, make sure you check which mode you're in, because then you can use the colours you've used to draw lines, to fill in areas, or for both. And if you tick the passive pick button, as you move your pointer over the colours, it tells you which palette entry you've chosen, and also the tone of the colour. And this is useful if you've used anti-aliasing. So as you move over the red, it changes the tone when you go over the anti-alias colours. But even with all this, it can still become a slow process. Flipping between tabs, and if you've got a lot of colours, scrolling up and down the list. And it's not a very visual way to select colours. So there's another way, the colour model. So to show the colour model window, just select it from the Windows menu. And like all of these windows, you can dock it or let it float. So just click it into a dockable area until you see the red line, and then let go. To make it float, just drag it away again. But I've set up the separate room, which I've called colouring, the colour model docked at the side, just below the X sheet. And then very simply, you can just load in a pre-prepared colour model by choosing the load colour model option from the file menu, or from the context menu of the colour model itself, or you can just drag and drop your image onto the colour model. So if you painted concept artwork in another application, or have downloaded an image from Google if you're animating fan art, as I am today, then you can just load that image. And it's important to realise that when you load a colour model, it'll have the colours from that drawing into your palette, and the model image will just be a shortcut to selecting those colours. So to be able to use it, you have to have a cell selected and level, because loading the model brings the colours into that level's colour palette. And don't forget that each vector and Toon's raster level has their own separate palette, so you'll be adding the new colours to the selected levels palette. But the standard raster level has a shared palette between all standard raster levels, so any new colours will be available for all standard raster levels. So in short, make sure you're loading the model into the right level. So I've made sure I'm on the Leela level here. Now right click on the colour model, choose load colour model, and now browse into the extras folder where right now I've got the image, select the image and hit load. So on loading you have a few choices on importing the colours. And the first choice is whether to overwrite the palette with the colours from the model, losing all the colours you've set up already. Or you can choose to not import the colours if you've already imported them previously, 
maybe on another day, or if you hand coloured the image with colours that are near enough, and then when you use the colour model later, it'll select the nearest colour from your palette. Or the final option, which is my preferred one, is you can keep any colours in the palette that you've already got, and add the new colours in a new tab. And this has the added benefit of separating each loader model into its own tab. And if you choose the wrong one, you can always undo it and try it again. And the next choice is to decide how to load the colours. And if you pick the first or third option from the top section, there's really only two choices to consider, and from those, you'll mostly just use the one. So you can pick every colour as a different style, and this adds a colour to your palette, even if they're really close to each other, which for anti-aliased images can add quite a lot of colours. And the next option is the one you'll be wanting to use mostly, and is the one we'll use today. And that's to merge similar colours together. But unfortunately, you can't choose how similar the colours are, but it removes some very close duplicates, so you'll get fewer colours, which is good. And finally, you've got the option to use a feature that allows you to have a colour key on your image, and the colours are taken from that. You can choose the colour of the line grid, the size of the line, and the order the colours in the key are displayed in. And this is useful if you work in a studio where someone else produces the models, and they can apply a standard format for this key. And there's more details about the colour model in the documentation that I've linked below. So, press apply when you've selected your options. And again, these are the ones I usually use to add a new tab with the colours from the loaded image and to integrate similar colours together. So now the model is loaded, a quick word about moving around the model. You can zoom in using your mouse wheel if you're using a mouse, or you can press the plus and minus keys. And you can move the image around using the middle mouse button. And reset the view using the context menu options, reset view, or fit to window. So because I chose to add the colours from the model, it's added the colours to the palette as a new tab. If I extend that, you can see it's created a new tab called Colour Model. So I'll just rename that. And as I said earlier, as this image was anti-alias, there are extra colours shown in the palette that we don't need. So if I zoom in to the skin here, you can see all the different shades of pink around the anti-alias area. Likewise, if you look at the hair, you see lots of different shades of purple. But in the centre, it's all one flat colour, and that's the colour we want to use. And to avoid this in your own drawings for colour models, fill them in with flat colours and turn off anti-aliasing when possible. So now we just need to delete the unused colours, and the best way to do that is to select a colour on the model to show the actual colour in the palette. So there's the skin and then delete all the similar colours around it. And you might want to rename the colours as you're doing it, so you know precisely which ones are which, and that also enables you to have the option of selecting them from the palette instead of the colour model. So I'll just go through each of the colours, selecting the main colour, renaming it, and deleting the rest. And that only takes a minute. So, using the colour model couldn't be easier, and this is where you'll see the benefit of setting it up. So all you need to do is just click on the model, and it selects the colour in the palette, and then you can use it. Now you can use it to draw, but mostly you'd use it to fill. But because you've got the image of your character or prop on screen, it's much easier to pick the right colour. So to fill quickly, you select the fill tool, and go from clicking on the colour in the model, then onto the area on screen. And that's it. That's the main purpose of the colour model. So I'll just colour this in now. But the eagle-eyed among you may have noticed a few other options that are really important. So instead of having to find an image to colour from, if you've got an original character on screen and have coloured them in, but now need to colour the rest of your animation and you want a quicker way, like using the colour model, how do you go about it? Well one way is to colour the first frame and then load the on-screen image into the colour model. And this has the benefit of not adding any new colours into your palette, because they're already there, and you don't have to keep a colour model image lying around. So you just right click in the colour model and choose Use Current Frame, and it pops into the colour model. And then you just move on to the other frames and colour them in.
Alternatively, if you're currently in a level that's using your current scene or even not in the current scene, you can just load that in. Just choose Load Colour Model as before and then select the file. And for standard raster levels, these are stored as image TIFFs by default and are in the Extras folder, one TIFF per drawing. So here you can see I've got two TIFF drawings, D and E. And these are just images and work as the first image worked. So we've dealt with that already, so let's look at the other two types. So Toon's raster levels are stored in your project's drawings folder and they end with the extension TLV like this one here for C and A and B and each one of these stores the whole level and that will be useful in a second. And vector levels are also in your project's drawings folder and they end with the extension PLI and these also store the whole level so let's load one of them. So just for an example we're loading the Leela level and that I know is called B.TLV and you can find that out by right clicking on level and choosing level settings or just by looking at the name on the X sheet. And one quick note, you can also choose a level from a different project if you wish. So you can have multiple projects using the same colour model. So we'll press load and we get just one question this time whether we want to overwrite the palette. And on this occasion I don't want to because we've already got the colour palette set. So I'll hit apply so now we've got the Leela level loaded into the colour palette on the right. And remember, this hasn't loaded the level into the X sheet, it's just a shortcut to adding colour to your palette if you choose, and then to be able to choose them from the colour model instead of from the palette list. But there's another big advantage of loading colours from a level, and that's that a level can have multiple frames. So you could have a turnaround animation in the level and show that, which means you can choose colours from the front and from the back of a character. So you choose which frame you currently pick colours from, using the play buttons or the drag bar at the bottom. So if I press play, we see the animation so far. Or you can skip one frame at a time, or drag the drag bar to find the right frame of the animation. And then as before, you can simply choose a colour and then fill in your animation. So that's it. That's how you set up and use the colour model. A really quick way to colour in the animated characters and props. But what about colouring multiple frames? Well that's what I'll be looking at with you next week. And that's a guarantee.